Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Oh, this is the Hot Topic Show. It's what we do. We won't judge, but we're judging. It's going to be juicy. It's time for a hot I'm so excited to get ready for today's show because you know, we only live like 15 miles from the city, but here in New York Tri-State, we commute at least an hour and a half every morning. We, when I say we, I mean all of us. Am I correct? Yeah. Whether you take the train, whether you drive, the traffic is hell. <laughs> so you have to have your music right. And so today, to prepare for my, uh, for my friend The Game, who's from the West Coast. <laughs> we listen to all West Coast music, so pardon me if I start crip walking in the middle of the show. <laughs> anyway, Game will be out here uh, soon, and um, he's got a new album and stuff. Plus, Tiana Taylor's here as well. So, um, and Tiana has never done a daytime talk show, so this will be an exclusive, and you know, I'll get to the bottom of everything. Yeah. Um, and so, while I'm putting on my costume, which, by the way, I sewed myself. A little dress, and a little pair of shoes. Rambo, can I have shoe cam? Uh, yes, okay, they're camo pony. They're camo pony. Okay, pony hair camo, only three inches. If you can't walk in three inches, then there's, uh, even I can walk, Suzanne. I can't in, walk in three inches. Oh, you're, you're well, wearing I'm my wearing Wendy your flats. flats. Thank you. Yes. Okay, and you're wearing my dress. Yes. Yes, Suzanne. Well. On Friday at um, HSN, I will be launching my shoe line. Now, the thing about the shoes is that, th here's the problem with shoes. You know I have a size 11, size 12 a foot, but I'm a, bi I'm a tall woman, and if they were any smaller, I'd fall over. So I'm proud of that. But there's not a whole lot offered out there for us. So on HSN, I will be um, showing you my new shoe collection, my line, uh, um, seven o'clock, uh, Friday night to nine o'clock. It goes from size small all the way up to size 12, and we include wide. Yeah. yeah. Boots, shoes, flats. Later on in the show, you know I always change to flats. If you take a look, you'll see down there I'm wearing some really snazzy flats as well later on in the show. And then on Saturday, I'll be there from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and then 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. showing my um, fall collection, more of the stuff, including trench coats. <laughs> but that's not the story. So I'm getting dressed and all of a sudden I get this just in from Nick Cannon. Oh. He posted on his Instagram that I swagger jacked him. Oh. With my turban. And he was playing with me, so I'm playing with him back. But you know, Nick, I've been wearing turbans for a long time. There was no swagger jacking. Oh. Love you, Nick. 
So, did you see Dancing with the Stars last night? Yeah. Ryan Lochte spoke out against the protesters who stormed the stage last week. All right, take a look and then we'll talk. After the dance, two people protesting against me went out on the dance floor. Excuse me. Then I look up in the stands, I see my mom just in tears. And seeing her in tears, it just... <sighs> this whole situation has impacted me so much. It's just how far can I put it back in my head and move on? Well, if you didn't go on Dancing with the Stars, which, by the way, I didn't think was a good look for him. I thought his team should have brought him back from Rio where, you know, if, um, you know, as a black person, I'm feeling like if he was black, he would have already been buried under the jail <laughs> for that gas station fiasco in Rio. Um, if I were Brazilian, I would be offended. But on the count of I'm not Brazilian and there's so much bigger stuff going on here, I forgot all about this guy already, you know. <laughs> with what he did. <clears throat> um, I, you know, they've suspended him from swimming competitively for 10 months. Well, he's like 34 years old, 32, 32. Okay, gee, <laughs> So, <laughs> so um, you know, so you sit out and you practice and you come back in 10 months and you win. And we are forgiving people. That's one thing we are. We, we are a forgiving people. Uh, but Dancing with the Stars was a bad look for you, but not for Cheryl Burke, because she seems to get with her partners. <laughs> She's got a rep. Cheryl. Gee. <laughs> anyway, and also on Dancing with the Stars, Amber Rose. Now look, now I'm gonna tell you something right now. She did not impress the judges. Now, she's dancing with my uh, Tony Dovolani, and they put a lot of smoke around her feet, so you don't know what she's doing down there. <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned, I might have danced better than her. <laughs> but, <clears throat> but here is the misconception. People assume that if a girl is an ex-stripper, and she's got a big butt, and she's real cute, that she's gonna be able to twerk it down. Yeah. She can't twerk, just, just, like, just like a lot of you all assume, because I'm a big giraffe with two left feet that I can't break it down. Mother can break it down. Just, just not in front of you, just not in front of you. So thank you, Amber, for redeeming us all, because a lot of people feel like if you have a certain body type or walk a particular way, you have no rhythm. We have rhythm where rhythm counts. Um, and then, and baby face, we haven't talked publicly, but in my head I'm screaming at you when I found out you were on this show. What are you doing on a variety show? Like, aren't you a legend? What? Are, uh, are we having financial problems? <laughs> no. Uh, so why are you on Dancing with the Stars? This is low brow for you. Just saying. Like, <laughs> Dancing with the Stars is a place where you go when you want people to either forgive you or recognize you. I went because I wanted to be recognized. It was season two or one, two <laughs> of our show. You know, so we were still, we were on a tricycle, you know, still, you know, and I'm like, hello, everybody, I'm here. Wait a minute, Dancing with the Stars. I'll show ya. Anyway, um, so Babyface's friends showed up in the audience, including David Foster um, and Bobby Brown, who was behind David. Now, Bobby, <laughs> sir. Every time I speak to you through the TV, I feel bad because I know we have, you know, a history and things like that. But Bobby, you set yourself up every time, so I've got to say it like I mean it. <clears throat> Bobby, what are you doing there? What is going on with you? 
And why does it seem like everything that you do is, a, is for an opportunity for you to be in front of us as opposed to focus on the main situation at hand, whatever that situation would be, in which case, let's talk about the dearly departed Bobby Chris. Well, um, the judge threw the book, you might have heard, at Bobby Chris's ex-boyfriend brother, Nick Gordon, on Friday. Here's what had happened. <laughs> Nick was sued by Bobby Chris's estate for $50 million. Whoa. Now, you know, they sue high. He doesn't have this money. They'll never get a dime. But anyway, the estate claimed that Nick gave Bobby Chris the toxic cocktail, which led to her death. Whoa. And they asked Nick to show up to court not once, but twice to defend himself, and he never showed up. Now, Nick Gordon is 20 years old, and I don't know how you were at 20, and I, I was aloof and zipping and zooing, <laughs> a little harder than I do now. Yeah. But, but I was smart enough to know, even with my parents telling me, that if you can go to court and clear your name, you go to court and clear your name. <laughs> right? Nick is defending himself, which you know is the worst thing, even when you're innocent. I backed into a car in West Orange, New Jersey, in a strip mall oh. <laughs> about, two, about a year and a half ago. Oh. I didn't tell anybody, because I, I didn't know I did it. The music was banging. <laughs> Look, no. Because like, you know that little bass knob right here yeah. that you can get put in your car? It kicks the bass. So this was not old Aunt Wendy, this was young Wendy, okay? <laughs> and, I'm, and the music is banging, I'm backing into the space. I didn't realize I hit a car. Uh -oh. At the same time the music is banging, the phone rang and it was my son, and so I had to get home. So I still had the bass banging and I pulled out. I didn't recognize <laughs> anything. That... Well honey, about an hour later, zing zong. <laughs> Two squad cars. We don't even live in West Orange. They came all the way, apparently some big mouth squawker in the strip mall, copied down my plate, <laughs> gave it to the cops. The cops show up at the house. So, and they're like, well, where's your truck? So I get, I'm like, it's, so I go around to the garage. Now it's like I'm hiding it. And so immediately, what do we do when we feel like we um, are wrong, girls? Cry. cry! Yes! 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 My bank, my bumper is done. Not, not done, but just, you know, a little something, something. Um, but I didn't feel it because the bass was banging. The bumper was done. I'm crying. The cops were nice. They said, how you do? I'm like, okay, okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. I'm like, all right, officers, really, how am I gonna tell my husband? Because I go into total girl mode, you know. <laughs> Even though me and Kev are on equal, we're partners. But when you go play that girl card, you play it, girl, <laughs> right? I look, look, I'm like, Please know how you doing. I'm doing the worst. I've got on a wig, I've got on my robe, I've done this, I've got to tell my husband. I had no idea. Anyway, I go to court. But we hired an attorney to go to court just for, and I got off, because I didn't know what I did. You know, I played, you know, batty woman, because I guess I was, at that particular time, batty woman slash hood chick with the bass knob. <laughs> All I'm saying, Nick, is there are lawyers everywhere, whether you have to call 1-800, when we take the Wendy commercial break, they advertise here on the show. <laughs> There's a lawyer in everyone's family. You should have gone. Anyway, the judge had had enough. He didn't go to court twice. And now he said, you know what, Nick? You're dodging something. So you will now be deemed legally responsible for Bobby Chris's death in the civil case. Oh. Very sad.
I told a whole big story just to get to that point, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, and we'll be following that story. But, but Bobby, <laughs> as opposed to be, being at Dancing with the Stars, you should be handling your handle with your family and whatnot. Because while we were all, you know, mourning your loss for your daughter, you were busy on TV selling books, hot sauce. <laughs> no, he's got a line, sir, of hot sauces and barbecue sauces. And he was selling them on TV. Okay, let's look away and come back. Okay. <laughs> TLC's, uh, um, <clears throat> TLC's former manager Pebbles, you know Mercedes boy, the mogul Pebbles, she was here. Um, well, she just scored a huge victory, legally speaking. Probably because she hired a lawyer, <laughs> Nick. Anyway. Um, remember, Pebbles uh, filed a $40 million lawsuit against Viacom and VH1, not the T, the L, or the C. She went for the people with the money. Yeah. Viacom and VH1, saying that that TLC uh, TV biopic defamed her, which I didn't think it defamed her. I thought it showed her as a hard-nosed boss that sometimes you have to be when you're you know, navigating the crusty waters of being an attractive woman who's with a dimple in her chin, who's trying to, you know, mogul stuff. So, now a judge has ruled that she does have a case that she, the judge feels that she was defamed. And so now the whole situation is heading to trial. Oh. I smell a windfall yeah. of something, of something. I mean, if you sue up, you'll get a few coins. I mean, not from Nick Gordon, but you can get a few from like Viacom and um, you know, the other one. So if you sue for 40 million, she might get $5 million. That's cute. <laughs> well, uh, oh, by the way, um, look, Chili, who I still can't believe is with Nick, but I'll go with that if that's what you all are saying. And t Boz, remember when you guys were asking your fans to donate money to your Kickstarter for a new album? Yes. Well, what happened to the album? Because we here at Wendy remember everything. <laughs> You know, I mean, we donated 10 bucks and all we got, <laughs> we did, no we did. We got a show budget. So we donated 10 bucks and they sent us a mimeographed, um, uh, oh my God, how old am I? Clap if you remember a mimeograph machine. You, <laughs> you old crows. Um, they, a copy, that's what they call it, uh, kids. A copy. <laughs> they sent me a copy of a pre-signed note saying thank you. But that was it. But There's no album. We were counting on a percentage of the sales and the whole bit. Just saying. Good luck, Pebbles. We're following that too. Um, by the way, a shout out to Lionel Richie. You know I love you. Hello. Hello. But Lionel, your daughter shouldn't have been dating Justin Bieber from Jump. Oh, oh yes, oh yes. This, oh yes, oh yes. Oh yes, listen, listen. She's 17 years old, but she turned 18 while they were dating, just six weeks ago. And um, Justin and the girl only dated for like six weeks. But she was like in love. You know how it is when you're 17, about to be 18, you fall for anything. <laughs> and she was traveling the world with him. I'm talking about you need a passport. Now at this particular point, like I remember when I was 17 slash 18, yeah, I was in college, you know, senior in high school, going to college, but my parents were still kind of the boss of me. And my dad, if my dad sat down with a cool head and said, look, you know, this guy is not the one for you. 
and I'm gonna give you this reason, that reason, and the third. Now, most of us have corny dads, but when you have a dad like Lionel Richie, who knows the business, who could really talk to you straight talk with curse words involved, maybe, why was she dating him from the beginning? I'm just glad it's over. Sophia, you shouldn't have been dating him. Justin Bieber is having a, the time of his life dipping and doing it with all the girls. You don't wanna get your heart broken. And Lionel, you should have told your daughter better. And that's it for Hot Topics. All right, well, still ahead, Tiana Taylor is here, but up next, rapper, the game is here. Don't go far. whose new album, 1992, hits stores on October 7th. Please give it up for our friend, The Game. It's called me by the game. It's, it's called you. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, let's give game some Timberland shoe cam. Go ahead. Go ahead, game. No, put your feet on those feet. Uh, oh, right here. There you go. That's how we do it. You Fresh know, on the East Coast, we do that. On the West Coast, you guys do chucks. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay to switch it, switch yeah. it up sometimes. So welcome to the show. Thank you for having me again. Let's, yeah, we've known each other for a very long time, so I'm figuring I can get maybe a little bit more out of you yeah. than what I've heard. So what's going on with you and Meek Mill? Um, you know what it is? A little, it's a little hip hop beef, you know? But JC on. Uh-oh, here she go. But, but I'm just saying that's not good. You know, yeah. this harkens back to the East Coast, West Coast, Coast from back in the day with Tupac and Biggie and nothing good ended up of that. And you know, you got kids and I know that you and Snoop and, uh, have been very involved with um, gang violence and getting together with the police. And I know you have your, um, um, your what's your charity called? Robin Hood Project. Robin Hood Foundation. Uh -huh. You're a good dude, man. <laughs> <clears throat> Why are, you, why are you fighting with this man? It's not a, uh, we haven't had a fight yet. You're not gonna have a fight. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, it's not a fight, it's just, it's just hip hop. You've kept it on, on music right now, but I, I listened to both and it sounds very threatening. All right, so a synopsis of what had happened and correct me if I'm wrong. So you were in the club, Meek Mill was in the club and who's the third person? Uh, Sean Kingston. That's right, Sean Kingston was in the club. Sean Kingston got robbed of a, like a $350,000 something or another of jewelry. Yeah. And Sean called Game, because the club was in LA, and Game is the gateway to a lot of activity in LA. Right. Um, yes, so Sean, who's not from LA, <laughs> called Game like, yo, we were all in the club, I don't know what happened, can you help me get it back? And it turned out, he also called Meek. Right. And Meek said, I don't have anything to do with that. That's all the game. Yeah. And so that's where, yes, you understand? And so that's where the beef comes with you and Meek. Yeah. Okay. So some very disrespectful words were exchanged. How far are we gonna take this? Um, you know what? I'm just, I'm day by day with it. Noah. Yes. <laughs> Noah. <laughs> It is what it is. You know, it, you, you, it comes down to a point where it's just like you got to deal with it as, it as it comes, you know? So I feel like I was violated and, uh, 
know. But you're grown. I am grown. But as grown people, we learn how to handle our beefs, and we all have them differently. Yeah. But nobody's perfect. We all have days where, you know, we're at fault and we make mistakes, and, you know, some days are good, some days are bad. So you got to take them all together. All right. Okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> um, by the way, how long are we going to let this beard grow? Like, are you going to do it down like this? <clears throat> you know what? Uh, what's going to happen? <laughs> before, uh, before I left uh, California, my grandmother asked me the same thing. She was like, this thing, how long? How? I'm just like, Grandma, she's like, you don't want to trim it or cut it. I'm just, it's just growing. I like it. Ladies. I was talking to Kev in the back. He said he's about to start growing one. No, he's not. Yeah. <laughs> and he told me you hit a car or something listening to music. I, I did. I hit yeah. a car listening to music. He's listening to the game. No, no we're talking about the, your situation now. 50 Cent. <laughs> okay, now look. Look, game. Look, game. <laughs> um, so you and 50 had beef. I don't even remember where the beef started. Yeah. All I know is that it ended in a strip club when Game got on stage and said, basically, I've got love for 50. Yeah. Is it really squash what? Because 50 hasn't said anything. Yeah, you know what is, uh, you know, we're in a strip club in LA, a strip club <laughs> in LA. Yeah, we were there. Um, and, uh, you know, I just stepped to him and, uh, you know, we talked for about 15 minutes and uh, we kind of hashed it out and we left on good terms. And, you know, what were you I'll fighting leave. about? I don't even, it, it was so long ago, I don't even remember. <laughs> you know, that was over, that's like 12 years ago. Okay, but it's over now. Yeah, it's over now. And, uh, you know, I watch, I watch Power. I was going to say, I, hey. if you get the phone call to act on Power, will you be there? You know what? Uh, I, I definitely would. Um, I like Power. It's a good show. And girls like you, like, you're a you're yeah. must-see TV. Yeah. You're, I mean, I, I appreciate am, that. I would invite you here even if you just sat in the audience. Girls just like to look at you. Yeah, yeah. You see me looking, trying to find somebody. Oh, I've got plenty of girls. Is she out there? Yeah, yeah. You, you, no, look, but she knows you're a player and she doesn't want to get her heart broken. Yeah. So what, what is this deal with 1999? That's not the year you were born. 92. 90, uh, so, sorry, 1992. Yeah. What year, what is the significance of that year to you? You know what it was is that uh, 1992 was the first year that, uh, you know, I joined the gang. And I, at, at that point in my life, I was getting pulled in both directions because I grew up in a crib neighborhood. But, you know, my brothers were bloods. And so it was sort of a tug of war. And that's how it is in, in Compton is, you know, once you, you know, come into getting close to your teenage years, gangs start pulling at you. And, uh, you know, it's almost 99%. Um, that you will probably join a gang. And so, uh, yeah, I got pulled in that direction. Also, that year was the 92 riots, and uh, I went through a lot in my life at 12 years well, old. Well, I see people that I recognize. By the way, yeah. I recognize the whole graphics of this. It's kind of like the, the Snoop album. Yeah, same guy, Joe Cool. But there are Snoop's people album. on there that we recognize. Talk about who, who's on your album cover. Um, well, there's Crips and Bloods, you know, sort of having a tug of war with the 12-year-old me. Um, there's Rodney King beating, there's the OJ Chase, even though that was in 94, it was still, you know, around the, you know, early 90s. And uh, it's just, you know, my life based around that, you know, that, that time. The Dream Team won Olympic gold in 92, it was just, you and know. And so you ended up um, joining a gang. Ended up joining a gang, yeah. And um, did you get flack from um, getting down with the police for uh gang violence? Yeah, of course. Uh, at that time, we had, uh, you know, the Compton Police Department was one of the most corrupt police departments in probably the history of policing. And then now we got the Compton Sheriffs, and they, you know, right. they but cycle with Right, present it. day, J.C. On, aside from battling with Meek Mill and whoever he's battling, is your good guy. Do you get conflict and razzed, maybe, or, you know, chastised in the streets from your street faction for getting down with the law? Oh, uh, no, you know what it is, is that I'm I'm 100% myself. Anything that I do, any type of decisions that I make to do whatever it is that, I'm gonna, uh, that I want to do, like, mm -hmm. I, can, I can stand up behind it. I don't really care who's ridiculing or saying whatever. This is my life. I, I got to move. I like that. So, I like that also. Um, I often wonder that, you know, hearing, but you do what you want to do. Did you do, Chloe? And I'm going to ask you again. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you again, because no matter what you say, I think that you hit it at least once. Yeah. On your, yeah. Oh, no. Hey, no, it wasn't. <laughs> hey, 
Oh, oh, oh. That wasn't a, a kind of like, yeah, answer. That was like, yeah, like an ad lib, like, you know? Okay. Always good people, man. Okay, here's the thing. Game has a song, and in the song, you clearly hear him say that he slept with three Kardashians. Now, I've got a picture of an array of Kardashians, including the mother, because... Okay. Uh, have you slept with Chloe? <sighs> have you... Well, you know what? Let me just show you my receipts. Sometimes it gets late at night, and you know, it just, people... I don't know. Go ahead. Go ahead, your receipts. I'm gonna show you my receipts, and then we'll get back to this line of questioning. <laughs> Hit it. Were you hooking up with Khloe Kardashian? No. Oh. No. I, I just... Uh, oh. That hit me. That was... He said no, but he cleared his throat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's my thought. You got down with Chloe. Now, did you get down with Courtney? No. Kim. Yeah. You know what? This is what I'll say. I'll tell you this. Kanye is a really good friend of mine, and they got really, really beautiful kids, and I don't want to disrespect their family. Yeah, anymore. Lamar's a really good friend of yours, too. Yeah. Okay. So, it's Chloe, it's Kim. Have you slept with the mom? <laughs> nah. Hey, yo, hey, hey, Chris Jenner, Chris Jenner's cool, you know? <laughs> okay, what about the other two, the, the Jenner girls? They not Kardashians. Oh. <laughs> two out of three ain't bad, as Meatloaf would say. Yeah. Well, no, it's... Oh. It was three. You just, it's a, it's, it gets a little tricky. Okay. China ain't married yet. Oh, it's China. But it's all good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's facts. It was fast, yeah. it was easy. Facts. Oh. Facts, facts. Facts. Yeah, and she cool too. Okay, so in conclusion, game has been romantical with <laughs> Chloe, China, and Kim. Yeah. But in, in, all, in all chillness and all love, it's all love, you know? Sometimes, Wendy, come back, come back. Sometimes things happen and they're uncontrollable, but it's, uh, I'm a good guy, those are good people, and it's all love. Listen, after midnight, all bets are off. You know? After midnight, a lot of things are off. Okay. Thank you, Game, for being here. Game's new album is called 1992. It hits stores on October 7th, and it's available on pre-order now. Up next, real-life hot topic, Tiana Taylor is here, don't go far. became an overnight sensation after appearing in Kanye West's new music video, Fade. Please welcome Real Life Hot Topic, Tiana Taylor. I gotta be the first girl. First time for everything, girl. First time a girl jumped on me and lifted her feet off yes! the floor. And I can't believe I didn't fall. Where's the shoe cam? Um, okay. Um, I don't get no shoe cam. Yeah, well, no, well, but look. No, get into the shoe. Rambo, hit it. There it is. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Tiana. Yeah. Do it. Hello. Hi, Wendy. Do I call you Mrs. Sumter because I think that you're secretly Mrs. married? Mrs. Sumter. Sumter. I mean, you can do whatever you want, you know, you Wendy. But are you married? <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Maybe not. Yes. But maybe. You know what, I, I'm loving your wet uh, do. Thank you. It, I know, Faye got me feeling like. Can I touch it? Yeah, touch Is it, it crunchy? Yeah, it's like crunchy. No, it's mousse. not crunchy. It's like half crunchy, half. It's good. Yeah, because it's to keep it a little wet and then add a little mousse so the top part it's crunchy, but everything underneath is still wet. Yeah. Little he trick to keep it in place. Here, you know? Here's how I met you. 
through the TV for your 13th birthday party. Do you remember on MTV, My Super Sweet oh, my 16? <laughs> oh my gosh, so cute. And Thank you grew up you. in Jersey? No, Where, Harlem, you, girl. You grew up in Harlem. 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 All right. So now, many years later, here you are on the show, and you're the talk of the town with your new music video with Kanye West. Now, how did you and Kanye connect? <laughs> um, That's a good one. Yeah, that, 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 was, a good, that was a good show. But, um, you know, I've been signing him for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and... Um, I just don't think I was at that place. I don't think I was ready yet. I think timing is everything. God's timing is everything. That's the most important. Yes. And it's crazy because when I was younger, I used to get so frustrated. Like, why is he not doing anything with me? Like, what is it that I'm doing wrong? Like, like come on, I need to get it popping. Because you sing, you rap, and you dance. Yeah. You've got like one of those dancers things, almost like, um, like Sierra, you know, you're very, you know, very, Matrix-like, <laughs> but you've also got, <clears throat> you're also giving me Rihanna. Yeah. Do you find that that gets in the way, the whole, you know, in, in this Rihanna space? Maybe that's why he put you? No, not at all. I think, like, even with the Faye video, I personally feel like, had I not been through what I've been through, had I, you know, not had Junie and been in a happy space and, and, and be in love, I don't think it would've came out the same way. This was a very emotional performance for me. It was bigger than a sports bra and a thong, you know? Yes. It, was, it was a lot of emotion well, in that dance, a lot of she intensity. Had, she had a best friend who slept with her man, okay? <laughs> Let, now let's break it down. Are you still friends with her? Okay. <laughs> look, they're, they're, look, only because Tiana, there are a lot of dumb girls who would forgive the friend and, and stay with. Oh, girl, I ain't seen her since. Oh, good. But, um, <laughs> but I think most importantly that because, you know, remaining a good person and allowing myself to love again is why I am where I am. I have a beautiful baby. I have a wonderful husband. And I'm, I'm just... I'm husband! Very... You heard it! Yes! Ew! Ew! Y'all crazy. <laughs> and by the way, a beautiful baby who happens to be a very successful NBA player who delivered the baby at their home in the bathtub, not on purpose. No, it was on the bathroom floor, oh, girl. Oh, my my we, water broke on the toilet, girl. He was trying to get me downstairs, and I was like, look, this is not, I'm the, not making it to that car, so I kind of just laid on the bathroom floor. Her head was already out. She was looking around like, that's what it looked like out here. I, it was, for real, she was like, her whole body wasn't even out. I'm like, oh my God, a pair of shoulders is about to come out of my vagina. I don't know what's going on. We talked about this on Hot Topics. I found this the most miraculous thing. So then who cut the umbilical cord? Well, the ambulance actually did it once they arrived, but Iman had to tie the umbilical cord with a Beats by Dre cord. Okay, a Beats by Dre yeah, cord. Yeah, we didn't have anything. We didn't How have hood. Strings, nothing. I love it. I love it. Okay, so your man Iman is it's awesome. amazing. He's amazing. He's so big and strong. And all the girls want him. He's so big and strong. But you don't bother with them. That's your husband. Hello. Yes. I love your wedding ring. <laughs> now, most girls go for diamonds. You went for a ruby. ruby. Are you a July girl? No, actually, it's just he's a smart man. He's like, if anything was to ever happen, that ring alone, you already set. I say yes. I like your style. A smart ruby. man. It's an untreated ruby. It's an untreated ruby. What does ruby. that mean? Untreated is when it's, it's raw, it's a raw ruby. So Let it's worth a lot that. more. It's worth more than a diamond. Wow. Oh. So like treated rubies are, you know, is a little. It's treated. Yeah. Yes. You know. So now, okay, so now there's the baby and you riding Iman's back <laughs> in the Kanye video for Fade. Did he want to be in the video or was he like, come on, Tiana, you do your no, career and I'll it, do mine? No, he's, he's so supportive because it's like not only is he a basketball player, but he's really like just everything. He's just like, no, babe, let's do it. It's time. Let's roll. Get in the studio. Blah, blah, blah. He's in the studio with me. He's writing with me. Like, Aww. yeah, his credits is all over my album. Like, he's, Aww. yeah, he's my biggest supporter. So when he heard about the video, he was just like... All right, let's do it, but wait, what is Kanye gonna have us doing? Cause you know he crazy. Right. <laughs> and I was like, I, I, I don't know. And then what had happened? When he said the shower scene, I was like, yes! And then... <laughs> <laughs> and Iman was like, is all them people gonna be here? Nah, nah, somebody gotta get out. My, my man buns is all out. 
<laughs> they gotta clear out the room. That shower scene we almost made. Junior number two, girl. <laughs> Happy for you. I'm really Thank happy you. to meet you. I know you. I can't stop smiling. Like, and I, like I said, it's, it came from an emotional place because I had a lot of steam to get off my chest. I had a lot to get off my chest with having a very in, embarrassing breakup and heartbreak, and you know the fact that I can overcome that. Like this video watched me build, got that steam off. You're very strong. My my man, my beautiful baby. Well, if you want more information on this lovely young lady. Um, her new show is called The Breaks, and you can go to wendyshow.com. Keep your eye on her. She's going places. We'll be right back. Are you ready for more Premier Week? In this corner, it's the latest round of hot topics. So many hot topics. Oh, little time. And in this corner, Layla Ali on fighting to be the next celebrity apprentice. Chris is from Philly. It's time for Pop Quiz. Here's your question. Which one of these singers never won a Grammy? Selena Gomez, Megan Trainor, or Alicia Keys? Ooh, um... This is so easy. <laughs> <laughs> no. Megan Trainor. No! Oh! Selena Gomez, it's okay. You're not going home empty-handed. Here you go. You got your Trans Jam uh, speaker wireless system. We'll be yes. right back. <laughs> TMZ just broke the news. Brad and Angelina are divorcing. <laughs> Angelina filed. Oh, everybody sit down. Oh, this is, look, Angelina filed uh, the court documents yesterday. Irreconcilable differences, but the streets have been talking for a long time. We will follow that story for you tomorrow, and we will be right back. <laughs> Ebony is from New York, and she is my eye candy for obvious reasons. Talk about it. Hi, Wendy. How are you doing? How are you doing? I know you love a jumpsuit, so I wore this sherbet jumpsuit just for you. It's $90, and I got the new pumps for only $40. Fantastic. Here's your diva fan. Thank you, Ebony. We'll be right back. breath away every day. Thank you for watching. Bethany Frankel will be here tomorrow. The Kent Jones performance will be tomorrow. His hit song is called Don't Mind. I love you for watching today. Thank you, my people. See you tomorrow. On